Hello everyone. So today we are going to learn about power of point theorem, which is an essential concept in Olympiad geometry, and it is useful in lot of problem solving. So it states something like this. Suppose you consider a circle as shown, and take a point either on the circle or inside the circle or outside the circle, and draw a line through that point so that it intersects the circle at two distinct points, namely x and y. So power of this point P with respect to the drawn circle is defined to be P x times P y. That is distance. From point P to the first intersection, times distance from point P to the second intersection. So, though this quantity is not very trivial, we are going to see its multiple purposes and properties on it. And let's solve one beautiful problem at the end by applying this theorem. This will be really helpful for students who are preparing towards IOQM and AMC. So let's get into the video. Power of a point. So this is a property of a point with respect to a circle. So let's mark a point on the plane along with a circle that may contain the point or may not contain the point. And the power of this point P power of this point P with respect to the circle gamma is defined as follows. Construct any line through the point P such that it intersects the circle gamma at two distinct points. It's a very easy construction. You may construct any line through P. It's not about some specific line. Let it intersect the circle at the points x and y. Okay? x is the first point of intersection or the closer point to p and y is the farther point of intersection with gamma. Then power of this point with respect to this circle gamma is defined as px times py. That is distance of p to the first point of intersection times the distance of p to the second point of intersection. But you may wonder why this is being defined and how this is independent of the line with which we define it. So the question actually answers the purpose for which it is defined. So the power of a point is a property that is an invariant of the line you choose to define it. It will not change if you alter the line. So for suppose, if you consider a line L2 like this to intersect the circle gamma at the points A and B, then the power would be PA into PB, but the value won't change it will remain constant. So this property is described by the quantity power and let's prove why this is equal. Suppose you consider the chords AX and BY of the circle. Then since Opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. What is the meaning of supplementary? It means that they add up to 180 degrees, right? So if, so if angle BYX is theta, then angle BAX would be 180 minus theta. BAX would be 180 minus theta. But in turn, that implies that angle PAX is theta. So See how beautiful this is. Angle formed at one end of the cyclic quadrilateral equals the angle in the exterior of the other opposite end of the quadrilateral. All right. By a similar logic, we may prove angle ABY 
equals angle PXA. So let me write that clearly. Angle ABY is equal to angle PXA and angle BYP is equal to angle PAX. So let me use PBY instead of ABY. And you also have angle XPA equal to angle BPY. So now all three angles of the two triangles are equal which means the triangles are similar. So the order of similarity goes as follows. Triangle PXA would be similar to triangle PBY because angle X equals angle B and angle A equals angle Y and angle P is common. So due to this corresponding side ratios are equal. So let me elaborate on that point. We get PX by PB equal to PA by PY and this implies PX times PY equals PA times PB and this is the interesting aspect of defining such a quantity called as power of the point P because you can see that PA into PB is de defined as the power whereas Px into Py also defines the same quantity but they are actually the same which means that they are independent of the line you choose but it of course depends on the circle you choose that's why we define it with respect to a specified circle gamma here. So this do not work only for point outside the circle. A similar definition would retain these properties even if it is inside the circle. So let me pull out the configuration of it. Suppose this is the circle and point P is here. Then consider two different lines through the point P which intersects the circle at x and y and the other line intersects the circle at a and b. So now the definition is still consistent. It would be PA times PB or you can also define it as PX times PY which is equal to power of the point P with respect to the circle gamma. So the proof still remains the same. You just need to prove that triangle PXA is similar to triangle PBY by properties of angles inside a circle that is a chord subtense equal angle at the circumference. So this is theta and this is also theta and if this is alpha then this is also alpha. So these properties help us in retaining power of the point P. Let us try to solve one problem by applying it and you will see the influence it has in geometry. Here is the question. Consider a triangle ABC which is not right angled with ortho center H. What is ortho center? So let us draw a triangle. For now, let us consider acute angle triangle, but this proof can easily extend it to obtuse angle triangle. Ortho center is the point of concurrency of altitudes. So let us say AD is the altitude, BE is the altitude from B, and of course, the altitude from C will also pass through the point of intersection and one can actually prove that they are concurrent 
which we are not going to deal with but they concur at the point called as ortho center of the triangle and for obtuse angled triangle this point would be outside the triangle and that's why we restrain ourselves to acute angle triangle but the proof won't change for that configuration as well so it can be extended and now we are reflecting the point h about side ca to get the point hb and about side ab to get the point hc we need to prove that the points b hc hb and c all lie on a circle or it is also called as concyclic points so let's prove this in an interesting way using the power of point idea that we learned first observe that angle bfc equals angle bec where e is the foot of altitude from b and f is the foot of altitude from c and they are equal to 90 degrees and what if they are equal it would imply that the quadrilateral b f E C is a cyclic quadrilateral or equivalently the four points are concyclic. So what if these four points are concyclic? Notice that the line B E and the line C F both contain the point H. So why don't we apply the power of point theorem? So, the power of point when evaluated with the line BE would be BH times HE and so this is the power of point H with respect to the circle omega where omega is the circle circumscribing the cyclic quadrilateral BFEC. So, BH times HE would be the power which is equal to CH times HF. Beautiful. Let's multiply two both sides. We get 2 BH times HE equals 2 CH times HF. But what is 2 times HE? Think about this. 2 times HE would be HE plus HE but HE is also equal to EHB. So, 2 times HE is nothing but HHB because reflection preserves perpendicular distance to the line about which it was reflected. Thus, 2HF equals HHC. So, due to this property, we can rewrite this equation as BH, BH times HHB equals CH times HHC. Alright, what do we understand from this? Let us only think about the line segment BHB and CHC for now and of course they intersect at the point H right go back to the diagram BHB and CHC intersect at the point H. So what is so interesting here? Since BH times HB HHB equals CH times HHC one can actually prove by the converse of power of point theorem that these four points are concyclic. So, how does it work? This uses the idea of phantom point. That is, suppose if the circle through the points BC and HC 
intersect BH uh, the line BH again at the point T, then by the power of point theorem, one would get the CH times HHC, CH times HHC equals BH times HT. But from the equation given, I know CH times HHC equals BH times HHB. And now by cancelling BH, we get HT equals HHB. But that would directly lead to the conclusion that T equals the point H by the distance equality condition on a line. So now if T is the point HB, it clearly means that the circle through BCHC passes through the point HP and thereby we can conclude that the points B, C, H, B, H, C or concyclic. So, three points define a circle and that is why we took the circle passing through H, C, B and C and prove that H, B belongs to the circle and we have completed this question by using the power of point. So, it helps in various ways and this is just one of a rudimentary collection of its application. So, it is a very important theorem and it has varied and wide usage in geometry. So, there are more applications of this and I hope you can try out more problems from contests like IOQM, RMO, AMC and so on. So, thank you everyone. Meet you all in the next concept video.